Okay, good evening. I'd like to call the North Aurora Village Board meeting to order for Monday, November 1st, 2021. Uh, please join me in a silent prayer and meditation. Okay, thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor Grafino. Here. Trustee Carroll. Here. Trustee Curtis is not here. Uh, Trustee Gately. Here. Trustee Lowry. Here. Trustee Nedgevich. Here. Trustee Salazar. Here. Okay, audience comments. Anybody here to speak? Okay, seeing none, I have a proclamation to read National Apprenticeship Week. Whereas economic growth in the nation, the state of Illinois, and in the village of North Aurora depends on continued development of workers skilled in their chosen fields. And whereas apprenticeship program helps fill the needs by providing the means for the development of skilled workers and cultivation of pride and workmanship. And whereas registered apprenticeships are vital components of talent and development in many high demand and high growth sectors and are recognized as a critical post-secondary education training for future employment. And whereas apprenticeship programs help enhance economic vitality and create a stronger economic environment by producing highly skilled and competitive workers. Whereas the Village of North Aurora recognizes the strength and leadership displayed by apprentices, which result from the dedication and generosity of sponsors and participating employers who provide meaningful education opportunities through the on the job learning and related technical and academic instruction, which in turn serves to enhance the economic vitality of North Aurora. And whereas November 15th through the 21st, 2021, is being recognized as National Apprenticeship Week in, the, in North Aurora. The Village of North Aurora appreciates the positive impact that the apprenticeships have on individual and businesses, which help to improve the workforce in North Aurora and grow our economy. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Mark Afino, those present, and the Board of Trustees of North Aurora do hereby proclaim November 15th through the 21st, 2021 is National Apprenticeship Week in North Aurora. I ask all residents to recognize the purpose and value of apprenticeship training for the economic growth of North Aurora, dated the first day of November, 2021. Okay, thank you. We have a presentation by um, Bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Jamie Wilkie. She's with Lauterbach and Amen, and she's going to um, discuss the village's audit process and um, short presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. Thank you for having us this evening. Um, for any of you that have in front of you the audit documents, we'll go through briefly this evening. Uh, I know Bill has a presentation a little bit later in the agenda to go through some of the detailed results as well. So uh, my goal this evening will be to walk through the audit process itself, point out a few key areas, and then certainly open it up for any questions that the trustees might have. Uh, I first of all like to thank Bill and Mandy and the rest of the team uh, to say that they do an outstanding job preparing for the audit is truly an understatement. Uh, typically, we do not come into our municipal engagements in such a clean, well organized environment, so I certainly want to make sure the board is aware of how much effort they put in preparing for the audit so thank you. Uh, I do want to point out in the comprehensive annual financial report, which is up on the screen here as well this evening, uh, page 11 provides the certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting. I want to point this out because this is another independent review of the annual audit uh, conducted by the Government Finance Officers Association really deemed the highest level reporting that any government agency can undertake as far as financial reporting each year. Uh, quite a bit of effort goes into making sure that the document meets that criteria. Uh, so again, I wanna point out the award for last year's audit, and we will again be submitting this year's annual audit to the program as well, obviously anticipating receipt of that award. Immediately after the Certificate of Achievement Award, you'll find the Independent Auditor's Report uh, provided on pages 12 through 14 of the large bound document. 
Uh, the audit itself is really a two-prong approach when we come in each year. Number one, we are looking to ensure that the financial statements as presented are in fact materially correct. And number two, we are required to do an overall assessment of the village's internal control environment. So while we're not providing an actual opinion on internal controls, we are required to come in, do detailed testing of transactions. Uh, we do third party confirmations to ensure the accuracy of the balances that have been provided, uh, tracing transactions through the village's system, things such as cash receiving, cash disbursements, payroll, utility billing. Uh, and certainly this evening, if there were any red flags, findings, areas of concern, we would obviously have to report those to the board. Uh, those would be reported in what we call our SAS 114 letter. And I'm happy to report we have no such findings or areas of concern to report this evening. So truly a clean audit opinion that was issued for the May 31st financial statement. Immediately after the audit opinion in the comprehensive annual financial report, I just want to point out a very important section. I won't go into detail on this, but it's what we call management's discussion and analysis. Uh, management, as the title indicates, has provided 14 pages within this section of the document. Again, pages 15 through 28. Um, I always point out this section because from the board's perspective, this is really intended to be the executive summary. Um, I think you're hitting just about 200 pages in this document. It's a lot to digest. There's a lot of figures and disclosures. Uh, these 14 pages are really intended to serve as that executive summary. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance yet, I would encourage you to read that section in detail. What section is that? Uh, management discussion and analysis on pages 15 through 28 of the okay. large bound document. Yes. Uh, I also want to point out this evening that as part of the annual audit, we are required to look at the compliance for the village's two TIFs, uh, that being the Route 31 TIF, as well as the North Lincoln Way TIF. Uh, similar to the audit opinion on the financial statements, we also issue compliance opinions on the TIF reporting. Uh, certainly, if there were, again, any findings, areas of concern, those would have to be reported this evening. Uh, and we issued clean opinions for the two TIFs. I referenced the SAS 114 letter, um, just a few page standard letter. Again, there would be any required communication to the board included within this letter, things such as disagreements with management, um, significant journal entries, um, you know, estimates that we didn't agree with. I just wanna reiterate, there were no such findings or disclosures. So a standard, what we call SAS 114 letter. Steve, is there a mic on? Is there a, mic on? Is there a microphone on? Yeah. I'm sorry, are you having a hard time hearing yeah, me? Yeah, I, I actually am. Usually I don't. I'm, I'm very want, sorry. Yeah, would you like if, me to backtrack at all? No, no, no. no okay. I'm fine. I just, just doesn't, and I'm not hearing much audio out of that mic. And I was okay. Just, uh, I just asked Steve I will if talk it was up. on. Yes, no problem. Barely, um, as, a, as a rule, when you're talking to the mic, we can hear you like this. I just don't <laughs> right. normally. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Um, but it's just the air conditioning on the heat. As part of the annual audit, we have also issued what we call our management letter. The management letter gives us the opportunity each year to provide any recommendations. Uh, these are certainly not anything related to findings per se, but what we would typically communicate in the form of best practices or new standards that are coming. Uh, and that is the case for this year. We have a new governmental accounting standards board or GASB mandated change that will be related to how we report leases for the village. Uh, so we will be working with staff. We still have a little bit of time before the implementation of this new standard, uh, but this is one that potentially affects the financial statements. Um, disclosures, et cetera. So we'd like to make sure the board is aware that that is coming down the pipeline as well. Uh, the last piece of information I wanna point out this evening, uh, I know the village has not undertaken one in some time, but we were required this year due to some of the COVID related funding to perform what we call a single audit under uniform guidance. Uh, that audit is a special audit required when any entity expends more than $750,000 in federal funds, so grant funds, 
Um, clearly, with a lot of the relief programs that have been happening, we have many, many more um, municipal agencies that are required now to have that separate audit done. Uh, there's really kind of in-depth internal control testing as it relates to the program itself. Um, that has a different deadline than the village's annual audit. Uh, so typically that deadline is nine months after fiscal year end because of the volume of programs going on and the fact that the feds had not even released some of the required documentation that staff and auditors need to get through that testing. Um, we have another six months. Um, we don't anticipate pushing it to that point. We've already gathered much of the information from staff, um, but you will see coming uh, that final single audit report as well. Uh, certainly happy to answer any questions. I know I will stay around uh, for Bill's presentation as well, just in case any questions come up as part of that agenda item also. Thank you. No, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, motion for consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Roll, roll please. Trustee Lowry. Yes. Trustee Medvedge? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. All right, thank you. Under new business, item one, Bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number one is approval of the village's estimate for the property tax levy. The components um, that are being approved tonight is, as far as the estimate is $2,690,000 for the village, $1,970,000 for the library, equaling a total of $4,660,000 as the official property tax levy estimate for 2021. Uh, this was discussed at the Cal uh, last meeting. It also included in the packet is the official letter from the police pension fund requesting their funding of 1,443,240 per the last actuarial evaluation um, as part of that total tax levy. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Work call the roll, please. Trustee Lowry. Yes. Trustee Nedgevich. Yes. Trustee Salazar. Yes. Trustee Carroll. Yes. Trustee Gately. Yes. Okay, thank you. Item two, Bill. Item two is just the formal acceptance of the various documents that uh, Jamie went over earlier um, in this evening. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Work call the roll, please. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedgevich? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Hey, thank you. Item three, Steve. Thank you. Item number three is a new contract with our police sergeant's collective bargaining unit. Uh, the previous agreement expired May 31st. Uh, we had a very good negotiation. It went very well. And this is a new three-year contract that would be retroactive June 1st to May 31st of 2024. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Just want to say well, well done, Steve and staff and everyone involved. So. Call the roll, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedgevich? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. All right, thanks. Item four, Mike. Thanks, Mayor. Item four and five actually have to do with the Casey's development located in Randall Square, uh, which is the southwest corner of Randall and Oak. This uh, petition went to the Plan Commission on August 3rd, 2021, uh, with a unanimous recommendation for approval. It then concurrently went to the um, August 16th Committee of the Whole meeting for discussion and was met favorably. There are two items for consideration today. Uh, one is the um, amendment to the development agreement, the other being the amendment to the PUD. Uh, so the item number four uh, is the ordinance approving the first amendment to the development agreement between the village of North Aurora, Mark Sorrentino trustee of the Mark Sorrentino trustee number one dated October 14th, 1996 in a pro progressive concepts LLC. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? For call roll please. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedvedge? Yes. All right, thank you, item five, Mike. Number five is the ordinance amending the special use of B2 a general commercial plan unit development for lot five of Randall Square. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? 
Call the roll, please. Trustee Nedredge? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, those treasure report, I don't have any. Trustee comments? Administrator's report? Uh, just a couple things tonight. Uh, first, uh, the Casey's development that just got approved. I uh, just wanted to point out that one of the things that the staff has been working on is a new intergovernmental agreement with Kane County. Uh, you may remember that they have an IGA that controls our curb cuts on Randall and Oak Street. Uh, the mayor has spoken with some of their board commissioners and the staff has been working with their staff and we're actually trying to amend that IGA and uh, it's coming to a conclusion soon that will give us more control of our curb cuts on Randall and Oak in the future, hopefully. Um, other thing I want to mention was our Veterans Day uh, Memorial Celebration is going to be held on, on, on Veterans Day on the 11th at 11. And that is at, of course, our Veterans Memorial, which is on Willoway. Um, and then the microphone tonight, I um, want to point out that it, it, it does work, but it, it's not the best microphone and we're going to have to get a new microphone because I just think it's not working great. Okay. Then it's not just me. No, no, it's not. <laughs> we were testing it before and it was, it didn't sound great unless you spoke right into it. All right. Thank you. Village Department reports. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes to highlight some of the numbers um, in our comprehensive annual financial report specifically the basic financial statements, uh, which is essentially all of the high-level summary information um, for the year. Uh, the first thing I wanted to point out is this is the uh, village's uh, statement of net position, essentially our balance sheet for the entire village. Um, this is done on a full accrual entity-wide basis, so it's accounted for similarly to a uh, private business where we have you know, uh, capital assets, depreciation, and those types of things within this financial statement. Um, you can see we had total cash investments at the end of the year, totaling 31 million, 30, just over $31 million for all our operations, which are split into uh, governmental activities and business type activities, um, including various receivables. We had current assets of just over 30 million in our governmental activities, 7 million are business type activities for a total of 37 million. And scrolling down, you can see if you add our capital assets, which comprise the majority of our um, assets, uh, we wound up with just over 153 million um, total assets for the village at the end of the fiscal year. Uh, when you add in your deferred outflows of resources as well, um, and then we move on to our liabilities, we had liabilities of just under four point, just over 4.2 million in total, and those would be our current liabilities. And then when you get into our non-current long-term liabilities, you can see where we've talked about before. This is where we have the uh, pension liabilities on the village's financial statement, specifically not just um, police pension, which was a reduction from last year. It's at 10.7 million. Uh, we also have IMREF as well. It's just over a million there. Um, Jamie mentioned uh, new GASB statements. Uh, one of the statements we had to implement this year was called asset retirement obligations. Essentially, what is the cost of uh, any mandated cost that we will incur if we retire an asset? Uh, the ones that we identified um, during the year and along with the auditors were our deep water wells and water treatment plants and identified various costs associated with retiring those assets uh, once they are shut down. And we had some good recent history with that since we did the process with well three, we knew exactly what uh, a good estimate of what those costs are. So that's just something new on the village's um, financial statements for this year that I wanted to point out. Uh, you get down to the very end, you see our net position. Um, we have a total unrestricted net position for governmental activities of just under 6 million. Uh, that's really good considering we're also incorporating our pension liabilities. A lot of communities have a negative um, unrestricted net position. Um, we're fortunate that we don't um, in our financial statements uh, for the village. And adding the waters unrestricted net position of 6.5 million, we added 12.5 million total unrestricted net position. Uh, this next statement is the income statement for the village, essentially, uh, again, on a full accrual basis. It's, it's, uh, it's a challenge to read, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, other than we have total expenses, again, for government activities and business type activities. And then we add in all of our revenues, um, general revenues, and we wound up with a change in that position, remember, on a full accrual basis of 1.2 million for governmental, 
600 for business and 1.8 million total. Um, again, that's a full accrual basis uh, change in that position. Uh, this next statement is a balance sheet for governmental funds that we're traditionally used to talking about. And <laughs> just wanted to point out that this is, uh, you see our traditional funds here. These are our major funds, our general, our Route 31 TIF fund, and our capital projects fund. Um, those are our major funds and all the other ones are lumped into one column here on the statement. Um, the only thing I wanted to point out down here is this is where you see our fund balances for our governmental activities. I know it's a little hard to read, uh, but here you can see we have different type categories of fund balances, such as non-spendable, restricted for various purposes, committed fund balance, um, such as our capital projects fund. And then we have assigned fund balance by it being in a separate fund, it is assigned for specific purposes. And so you can see we had total fund balances for the year of 21, just over 21 million for all our governmental funds combined. Um, this is the uh, revenues and expenditures for the year. Again, for that same presentation of our major funds and our non-major funds in total. Um, just wanted to note the um, total revenues were just under 19 million, expenditures 14.4 million. So we had a revenues over expenses of expenditures of 4.4 million. And here you can see the activity where we transferred a significant amount of the variance, the positive variance in the general fund, uh, primarily to the capital projects fund where we transferred 3.2 million um, at the end of the fiscal year. And we also see here, this is where we transfer out our um, sales tax revenue for the pay payment of the debt service on a police station being $631,000. Uh, moving on to proprietary funds, this is our water fund and all of our internal service funds, which are also accounted for like a private business, again, full accrual basis this time. Your liabilities, um, again, we see our unrestricted net position for a water fund, uh, 6.5 million and 2.1 million in our internal service funds, which consists of our primarily our vehicle and equipment fund. Uh, this is our income statement for our water fund. Uh, you can see we had operating revenues totaling th just over 3 million last year. Most of that was water charges to customers at 2.7 million. Operating expenses are 2.6 million for the year in total, including depreciation. And so we had a positive change in net position for the water fund of 629,000. The internal service fund presentation you see on the side there, that is our vehicle and equipment fund. And that had a change in net position of 350,000 for the year. I'm not gonna spend any time on cash flow statements. Um, this is our fiduciary net position for the police pension fund. Just wanted to highlight the various categories of investments held by the pension fund at the end of the fiscal year. Like we've talked about before, we are anticipating within the next year, um, those investments being transferred to the new state, um, not state coordinated, but the ent statewide entity uh, that's gonna be responsible for the management of those investments going forward. Uh, we talked about the pension fund having a good investment year last year. You can see they realized a net investment income of 3.8 million. Um, ultimately re realizing a change in the fiduciary net position for the police pension fund of 4.6 million. Uh, so total um, net position went from 19.4 million to 24 million in the police pension fund. Um, just really quickly then wanted to um, highlight um, the other, uh, thank you, no, never mind. Um, our capital projects fund, that's what I wanted to mention. Um, we took in 1.7 million of uh, revenues last year, expended 1.2 million. So the reason why we had such a big increase in fund balance was the transfer of 3.2 million from the general fund, um, positive 451,000 variance. So the fund balance for the capital projects fund increased to 7.3 million. As we discussed earlier, it's, it's in a good position to uh, provide a substantial amount of funding for the significant capital projects that we have on the horizon. And then lastly, I just wanted to point out, uh, this is a presentation, if you wanna look at it later, this is the non-major governmental funds. So all those other funds that we lumped together are disclosed separately um, in this presentation. Um, you can see the one thing I did wanna point out is the motor fuel tax fund. 
Uh, we took in 1.2 million of uh, MFT revenues. As you recall that there's uh, rebuild Illinois bonds uh, funds in there as well as a new transportation renewal funds. So that fund balance increased from 1.1 million to two point, just over 2 million, which is why we were able to fund our road program this um, past year entirely with MFT revenues. So that's the end of my highlights. Um, any questions? Yeah, I have, I have a question. How yes. many years have we received a certificate of achievement? Um, I believe it's 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. It's a pretty good record, I would say. I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Very good. So thank you for um, that, those five minutes. Thank you, Bill. Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, we'll be meeting shortly for the community hall.